You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop, ready to check out the next recipe in the Easy Bake Oven Gourmet Recipes of Famous Chefs. I've done two recipes so far. It's a series that I've been wanting to do more of, but got sidetracked with a big family project. So uh, I have done, like I said, two of the recipes, and they're both in a playlist now. Let's see. We've gone through all this. I've shown you the introduction stuff, and then gone through all that. It's right there. We've done the Rick Bayless recipe, the tomato salsa, and then I have done the Mark Bittman recipe. That was the baked chicken with cherry tomatoes and capers. Both came out great. And then now, I think the most challenging so far is a deep dish truffle lobster pie. Now, a couple things. I don't have fresh truffle anywhere, but I found what I think is a good substitute for this recipe. And being a chef and cooking, you know, you have to learn how to substitute and find things that you have in the kitchen. So that's what I did. I'll go over that with you. It says, while well, Eric Blauberg never had an easy bake oven, he did have two sisters. And since each of them owned one, he wasn't a stranger to it. It was definitely their toy. But when they weren't around, I would sneak into their rooms, plug it in, and get it going. What he also got was caught. Not that he let them stop him. As soon as they started screaming for him to get out of their rooms, he'd simply smile and quietly point out that the cakes or pies or brownies were almost ready. Once his sisters realized they would get to eat what he'd been cooking, it wasn't a problem. As long as I shared, he explains, everyone was happy. All right, so this is an interesting recipe because it requires lobster. So I'm going to actually use uh, two ovens today. I'm going to use an Easy Bake oven and then my other 1900s oven because I'm going to make the lobster in regards to boiling it. And I didn't buy, like, canned lobster or anything like that. Uh, and the other steps, uh, you know, preheating the oven, you're lining the baking pan, all this stuff is new. The other thing I could not find, or actually did not want to find, was the truffles. Uh, where's that at? Paradise, do, 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 do. Pepper to taste, one teaspoon sliced black truffle for garnish. Now, I could not uh, buy that in such a small quantity. So I found what I think is a good substitute. Let me show you. All right, this is black truffles and mushrooms. So now, being a chef and cooking in the mini kitchen, you need to be able to substitute or find things that you may not have exactly. But seeing that this has mushrooms and black truffles, I thought this would be a good topping. Truffle thrills. So we'll taste that and give it a try. Looks pretty cool. We shall see. And then uh, other than that, I think I've got everything. So what I need to do now is get the lobster weight out, get that going, and then I'll uh, go over all the rest of the ingredients with you over in the mini kitchen. All right, so the recipe calls for one ounce of lobster meat. I was able to find, this is the smallest package I could find. It was $18 for Wild USA lobster tail. So I'm thinking I'll just cut a section here. I don't know exactly what one ounce is, and I don't want to necessarily take it out of the shell just yet. So I've got my meat shears with me. That is a lobster tail. Let's just cut a section off and weigh it so I can have at least a rough idea with the shell and everything. That's one and three quarters. So I'm going to go. Actually, I'll just do that. I'll do one and three quarter. It gives me more than I need with the shell. Actually, I should just put this whole piece on. This might be cooler to do in the video. That's two ounces. Yeah, let me do that. I think I'll put this in my little pot. Let's get that going. Start the water boiling. We'll cook that, and then we'll move on. All right, so those of you not familiar with this oven, this is a 1900s oven. The name is down here. It says Western Electric Junior. Now, I've used this in videos. I've cooked on it. It gets uh, very hot, almost like a real stove. So let me turn it on. Let me get the water in here. I'm going to kind of time how long this takes to boil, but here we go. And at the same time, the Easy Bake Oven light just turned on, so that is warming up. That should be enough. So I'm just going to let this heat up, and then I will time it, and then check back. Okay, so a couple things I need to prep. I need a sheet of parchment paper, which I have. Let me just cut a smaller square. I used one for the, the lobster, just to keep that from touching anything else. And then the pan. I have a pan here. Now I want you to trace the bottom of the pan. 
so that we can cut it out. So here we go. And then this is going to go on the bottom. And I still need to cut like a one inch strip, it says. A half inch strip, eight inches long, I mean. So we'll just cut it within the lines just a little to account for the actual thickness of the pan. I have extra pans because I'll need them later. So once this pan is set, I'll use those because you're supposed to cut and fit a piece of bread in there. Look at that. Very nice. All right, then an eight inch strip. Let me grab a ruler here. Okay, so it's been four minutes on the water. So let me just sneak peek. I won't show you, but I feel like, ooh, it's already hot. Very hot. So about eight inches, let's see, from here to about here. A half inch strip. Now this is so that I can put it on the inside edge of the pan. I didn't measure half inch. I'm estimating. That's probably close. It did say half inch. Let me check. Yeah, half inch wide. Let's check on our ruler. That's a little bit wider. That's like three quarters. So let's adjust. Okay, that's going to line the inside of the pan. Now, eight inches doesn't seem like it's long enough, does it? It's not. All right, so I'm glad I tested that. Let's go a little longer. Hmm. It said eight inches long. It's not. It's more like 10 inches long. So I'm gonna have to, here, let me turn this camera down a little bit. I hate to say it, but it's much easier working on the kitchen floor. Now, I could have done this on the other side, but I'm keeping my eyes on that. I got to cut this away because that was what I cut for the eight inches. And now I'm just going to cut what I think this needs to be. Oh, actually, I'll just go all the way. I'll lay it in here. Okay. And then I'll kind of push it. About there. And let's just check so we know. Yeah, that is about ten and a half inches. Now all that gets oil so that it sticks or stays in place. So let's do that next. All right, so it says brush each with olive oil, I'm just gonna use my finger because it's readily available. I don't have a mini brush in the mini kitchen. I'm gonna do this then, I'm gonna flip it over so I can get both sides. There you go. I think that's a good coating. And now the strip. Both sides. Okay. Then line that on the inside. It should stick better now. It does. Look at that. Sticks to the edges. Okay. Now once that's done, 
It says, okay, and set aside, set, set the strip around the inside rim. After it is set inside the pan, rub a little softened butter on the parchment, okay? Yeah, that's pretty good. It's a nice coating on there. All right. And then uh, after it's set inside the pan, rub the butter. And then now I need to move on to the next step. Now the water is close. I had to move it to a different burner. I reset to the back burner because that's the one that gets the hottest. I kind of totally forgot about that. So I checked the heat temperature. And the one in the back is about 268 and the one in the front that I put it on was about 168 so my timing is not going to be perfect but we'll check it in a minute okay let me check the water it's got what I would call little bubbles and it's steaming so it's not too far off I'm going to put the lobster in there shortly now it does say and that's it, I find this interesting two slices of dense white artisan bread but it does say trim all crossed off the bread and roll flat with a rolling pin. So I'm guessing the two slices stay together to make a layer. I'm not really sure. But what I'm going to do first is remove this section because it's not going to not going to be needed. And then remove this section. And I think the rest of this will fit into the pans. Now I flatten this to the size. Here, I got a little bowl here. Let's put all this in there. I guess I'm a little uncertain as to exactly why you need two slices. Maybe that just makes the bottom layer. Okay. And then roll this out. It's going to be hard on this surface. There we go. You know, I thought maybe you put a crust on the top. It doesn't really say that. And the dish he shows in his little picture, which is this dish, is not that. So let's just do that. Here, we'll cut this first to see, get a rough idea. Okay, and then I'll actually, I'll just take the scissors and trim that. Got to be smaller than that because the bottom is smaller. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, I'll read it again. Trim all crust off the bread and roll flat with a rolling pin. Cut a circle and strip out of the bread. Oh, so one is supposed to be a strip. Ah, uh, that's no problem. I can do that. I'll just use that. Do it in two pieces. And I want to make this as flat as possible because it is an easy bake oven. So this is the side crust. See, I didn't get that right away. Okay, so there's the bottom. And then I'll roll this out into strips. Cutting the strips for the side. I could have got another slice of bread, but I don't want to waste now that I've got this. I think that uh, 
water for the lobster is really close. Okay. I'm thinking that's close. We'll see. It's ten and a half, remember? Oh, it's really close. Let me cut one more big strip. We'll save all that for something else, huh? Beautiful. Okay. So there is our outer crust. All right, let me do a little cleanup in the kitchen and then I will come back and we'll start the next step. Okay, next step now, back to this, a little more olive oil. Brushed on the crust, it said. More olive oil and butter, that's gonna make it nice and rich. I gotta go on the, the hunt for a mini doohickey. You know what I'm talking about. Mini brush. I was gonna get a paintbrush, but I'm like, eh, it's not really a food brush per se. Okay, I don't know if you hear it. But the water is going in the background. I had a little patch piece there just to make it even tighter on the edge. Okay, brushed with butter. All right, now I can actually start the filling. All right, so you see, we've got a good rolling boil going. It's very hot. This will fit sideways. Ooh, there we go. Okay, well that's doing its thing. Let's head over to the other side. All right, so first I want to see what this is all about. Now it's interesting, they have it like that with that on the top, but then the pool is from the bottom so that they can Always let you know what's inside. Ooh, I have to take a general... Mm, yes, it does smell like truffle. Let's just put some in here. It's only a little bit we need. All right, that's done. And then besides that, there is some tomato puree. A red onion, which I have to dice. Tomatoes, which I have to dice. A mushroom, which gets chopped. There's the olive oil. There's two kinds of cheeses. One is Parmesan and one is mozzarella. And then there is a garnish of basil. Now this is a little bit different. It's a lemon basil, so it may not look like a basil, but it is. And then the truffles, of course, salt and pepper to taste. All right, so now you've seen all the ingredients. Let's start chopping. Okay, let's just do the onion first. Now, it all gets put in the pan. It's the tomato puree, the uh, onion, the tomato, and the mushroom, all distributed evenly. And it's only a teaspoon of onion, which is not a lot, but we'll make sure that it's a teaspoon. So that's why I brought in the teaspoon measure. I would say that's pretty good. All right. 
right, so let's put that in here. We'll add it to the crust in a second here. Now the tomato. And in the tomato, it is one teaspoon again of tomato. So probably just one of these little cherry tomatoes is enough. What do you think? That's probably good. All right, let's put that on the other side. And then one teaspoon chopped mushroom. Get that other cutting board back. Again, this is not a lot, so I think that's all we're going to need. starting to boil boil over it's not going to take long so I did have to remove just a little bit of water so that it wouldn't boil over too much okay there we go. Let's check out the lobster tail. Ooh. It actually looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to say that is ready to go. So, I'm going to take that out. Let me move that to another bowl. All right, here we go. I'm going to have to let this cool down and then I'll have to uh, pick out the lobster meat but all right let's get I think I might put this in the fridge for a little bit and then it'll cool it down quicker okay so there's still a little more prep but uh, I decided just to leave it here because it'll cool down pretty quick because I have more work to do it was one tablespoon let me get my tablespoon and one tablespoon of the mozzarella cheese so let's grate that Move this cheese here. We'll put it right there. Now, is that a tablespoon? I don't know. It's hard to tell. When you grate cheese, it's all inside. quite a bit. I'd say that's a tablespoon. Okay, so we'll just leave that like that because it's a garnish on the top. And then the grated Parmesan for garnish. You know what? I'll just use the plate I just had. And we're going to use the very small side. Okay, I think that's good. And then it did say to chop the uh, basil, but I think these are so small. I just, I like the look of the leaves or leaves. So I'm just gonna do that. These are right out of the garden. 
This one here I'll make a little smaller. See how small those are? It's just a garnish for me to sprinkle on. I might break these up a little bit more here. I'll just take it all and just kind of give it a... There. A U. Okay, so I'm set. Now, spoon the tomato puree is next, so let me make some room here. Let's get the lobster out so it's ready, and then we will assemble. Okay, now, never thought I'd be doing this in the mini kitchen, but here we go. We're just going to cut this right down here. These were clean. There's our lobster meat. A nice piece. Let's get the shell out of there. It's not the easiest or neatest thing to do. Okay, that's good. Okay, continuing on. Now I took this to my scale. It's a little light, so I have another piece boiling now, so I figure I can get this all prepped first because I've got to get the puree, the onion, the tomato, and then the lobster. So I need one ounce of puree. So I'm going to do it this way because I want to try to be as accurate as possible. I didn't pre-measure that, so here we go. I'm doing it now. This is one ounce to the line. Okay, there we go. So one ounce in the little pan. Well, that's quite a bit. And then over that, uh, the onion. It's almost like a little pizza pie, isn't it? Tomato. The uh, mushroom. Okay. Now arrange the layer of lobster over the tomato mixture. Let me grab that other piece. Okay, so that's going to bring it about where I need it. And then this just gets chopped up over it, but I'm just going to kind of peel. Might not even fit. I'm wondering too, you know, depending on the thickness of your crust. So I'm just going to fill this up real nice. Still got to fit in the Easy Bake Oven. Okay, that's good. Then a layer of mozzarella. Now, normally they say you don't mix fish with cheese, right? That's what I've heard. Okay, I think that'll fit. All right, then drizzle with a little olive oil. Ooh, that's on the other side. Okay, salt and pepper. Hey, anything coming out of there? Let me use this one. Ooh, that's better. 
Salt. And Pepier. Okay. I got it all. Puree, crust, onion, tomato, mushroom, lobster, mozzarella, olive oil, salt and pepper. Bake for 30 minutes. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. In the oven it goes. 30 minutes. Let me set the timer. Hopefully it doesn't bubble up too much, but uh, we shall see. 30 minutes. All right, let's take a sneak peek here. It's been cooking for a good 25 minutes. Now this oven was not intended to be used this way, but it's the only way I can use it so that I don't have to use the original pan pusher that came with it. And it looks pretty good. Let's just get it on here and see. Okay, so it is starting to brown on the edges. I'm gonna let it finish up. It really does look like a deep dish pizza. All right, I'll be back. All right, so here it comes out of the oven and it's gonna go right on the tabletop. And then I'm gonna finish the garnish that I need to put on there. Looks good. There you go. There we go. There it is. Definitely looks like a deep dish pizza. And then a little cheese. Some of this. And I don't know. Do you think I should transfer it to a a bigger plate. I have the blue paint off to the side. I did want to see what it looked like if it held up on its own and then a little of the truffle. Now normally a shuffle is shaved in little slices. So I'm just gonna this is almost like a, an olive muffaletta or something like that but it has truffle in it. I still think I do want to move it to a plate. I want to see how the pie itself has held up so I'm going to do that. Let me grab my plate. Let me move this out of the way. It is a little warm to the touch. This is probably risky. Wants to come out just needs a little nudging Ooh, okay good we saved it save that I can rebuild the edge I think leaving it in there one makes it hard to cut you don't get a, a sense of the crispy edge all right so that is that time to give it a taste all right brought the camera a little closer let's just see if we can cut this The crust is definitely crispy and hard to cut. And the bottom crust is definitely hard to cut. I don't think I'm going to easily be able to get this out of here. Hmm, I know what to do. Okay, so this is exactly what my grandma would do. She would grab her kitchen shears and she would cut, usually cut the pizza with scissors. I get it? Wow. Okay, so I got truffle on there. I've got all the ingredients. That's a good bite. Smells good. Let me cut this piece here. Let's see if I can at least show you the bottom and why yeah so the bottom is nice and brown the bottom right edge is crispy looking mm. okay let me give I'm gonna take the whole bite give it a taste mm. 
Ooh. You do taste the lobster. The lobster, the truffle, the oils, the butter, the cheese. That is a good bite. I'm going to say, generally speaking, not something that I ever thought I'd be making in the mini kitchen. Uh, but it did come out really nice. Would you try it? Are you a fan of seafood? It's definitely hard to cut. You almost want to put it on a like a cutting board and then cut it with a pizza knife type of knife, a big a bigger knife. So that you know you can get through that crust. But overall, I'm very happy with it. Hope you enjoyed the video. I had fun making it. I'm gonna take one more bite. Mmm. That is the deep dish truffle lobster pie from Eric Blauberg. And thanks for watching. And if you can, I'm gonna try to put his social media handles out there. Tag him. Uh, I don't even know how old he is. I really don't know much about him, so I'll put it in the description area. I'll learn more, and then I will inform you there. And thanks for watching, everybody. Later! If you're looking for the item you just saw in the video, click here. Watch more videos by clicking here. Don't forget to share on social media and give a thumbs up. Hey, LPS Dave. What's up, Butch? Make sure they don't forget to subscribe. Oh, yeah. Please click here to subscribe to Lucky Penny Shop. And always remember when you see a lucky penny, pick it up.